Good late afternoon, everybody. We're coming to you this afternoon from Highland Park. This is the virtual home for now of the Syracuse Mets. And today, boy, are we excited. It is the beginning of the International League's e Game one of a three-game series with our Paw Sox taking on the Syracuse Mets. Here we are back with you again on another Thursday. Josh Maurer with my partners, Jim Kane and Mike Antonellis. Guys, we did two great exhibition style games. That was kind of like our spring training. But now, Mike, we're going to get it going for real. The International League has organized some really fun E-League series that will get going here today. Yeah, I'm very excited about this, Josh. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know if I want to play now and be part of that E-League team since I like this game. But I think I'll stick to the broadcasting because I like being around you guys. So this will be fun. And, and we're on the road here tonight. Yeah, the Paw Sox will be visiting Team Jim Kane. And I want to just highlight before we get to some of our pregame festivities, the Syracuse Mets must be taking this E-League opener very seriously, Jimbo, because they have sent Ioannis Cespedes on our assignment. And he, he's going to bat third for the Mets. Oh, he sure is, Josh Maurer. You see a lot of familiar names in this lineup. Of course, Ioannis Cespedes, but also Tim Tebow, the very popular designated hitter in the cleanup spot is We'll get to the lineups in a little bit, Matt Adams, too. But, yeah, Yoenna Cespedes getting the start in the three-hole and playing left field. So this team's pretty important to Syracuse. I guess so. They've got Cespedes batting third and Tebow batting in the cleanup spot. They will all face Tanner Houck. Let's send it now to our Paw Sox public address announcer, Ben DeCastro, for a recorded message during this time of the coronavirus. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Today, from this empty ballpark, we would like to take a moment to share some thoughts. We wish you were here with your family, enjoying a beautiful day, laughing together, and making memories. We wish that there were players on the field fulfilling their childhood dreams while inspiring young athletes in the stands. But for now, we simply can't. We hope that it won't be long, but we understand that the best way we can all combat the rapid spread of this virus is to diligently practice social distancing. We would like to take a moment to thank those who are working tirelessly to care for those who have been affected by this virus, as well as those working hard to find the treatment and cure. To the doctors and nurses at all the medical facilities around the country and around the world, thank you. To environmental, dietary, engineering, security, and administrative staff at those facilities, thank you. To our first responders, police, fire, and EMS, thank you. To our armed services and National Guard, thank you. To those who continue serving to keep our country, the land of the free, and the home of the brave, and their families enduring these unprecedented times here at home, thank you. To our government leaders and teams working together with the single goal of flattening the curve, thank you. To the restaurants, businesses, and organizations, who have adjusted the way they operate in order to continue to provide goods and services to our community, thank you. To those companies who are working to provide supplies that will increase the survival rate and decrease the spread, thank you. To all the teachers, educators, who are working so hard to continue educating the next generation, thank you. To the moms, dads, and relatives who are perhaps stepping into new roles or extending themselves in ways they never thought possible to simply provide a sense of normalcy and balance, thank you. We encourage all of you, everyone, to keep checking in on each other. Make time each day to connect, whether by phone or video chat, with those whom you simply cannot visit with. We know that brighter days are on the horizon. 
When this fog clears and the sun shines once again, we seek to welcome you with open arms as we sing, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, and most poignantly, Take Me Out to the Crowd. Until then, please continue to stay safe at home. And a very important message from the Paw Sox to all of our fans as we continue to wait for baseball in 2020. Let's now send it back towards McCoy Stadium in brighter days and introduce you to Nicole Michelle, who will perform, even though we're going to sing it at McCoy and play the game in Syracuse today. Let's go to McCoy for the national anthem. <laughs> She is Nicole Michelle performing our national anthem. This game will be played at Highland Park in Syracuse today, but you know that there's a tradition before the Paw Sox would normally take to the field at McCoy. We've got our anthem performed, and here in video form is that anthem itself Paw Sox Baseball. Dreams come true. Paw Sox Baseball. 
There you have it. Paw Sox Baseball, the anthem of the Pawtucket Red Sox. We're ready for game one of the international E-League season. Paw Sox visiting Syracuse. Josh Maurer, Mike Anglis, and walk-off Jim Kane. And let's get to the Yingling starting lineups. Mike, for the Paw Sox, it was the hero of their exhibition win against Buffalo in the leadoff spot. Yeah, Zue Lin. How about him? He's been outstanding uh, patrolling center field for the Paw Sox. So we won't see a walk-off by Zue again, but maybe he'll be the hero uh, late in the innings here, seventh, eighth, or ninth innings. We hope it's not a walk-off for the Mets today, Jim Kane. We talked about Ioannis Cespedes and Tim Tebow. That makes a very interesting middle of the order. It certainly does. And Josh, let's hope there is no walk-off today because that would be bad news for Pawtucket. But yes, yeah, Cespedes, you see him highlighted there. It's a guy who missed all the last year. There's been a lot of controversy and adversity for Ioannis Cespedes in his Mets tenure. But there he is at the top of the order. He has not played in a major league game since July of 2018. So getting ready for the team that would be the Syracuse team to take the field. Today's game is a Syracuse Mets home game, and we have chosen Highland Park, capacity 10,150 as the home for the virtual Syracuse Mets. It, it actually very closely resembles, as you're about to see, what is their normal home on the north side of Syracuse, New York, NBT Bank Stadium. If you enjoy some beautiful slides from McCoy, and now we're ready to go. It's, as we said when we came on the air today, this is game one of a three-game virtual series. Game one is the Paw Sox controlling it, and we have our own Tim Quidadamo playing as Pawtucket against the virtual Mets. Game two, the script will be flipped. It'll be the Syracuse Mets controlling the game. And then game three of this virtual series will have the Paw Sox and Mets each playing against one another with major league players. Walker Lockett, big league time last year in the New York Mets rotation. He made four starts. He also made five appearances out of Mickey Calloway's bullpen. Ready to go. And Zhu Wei Lin to lead things off. Glad you're with us. And off and running. What do we know about Walker Lockett, guys? Fastball, curveball, changeup, then throws the two seam, four seam, but uh, probably see a lot of fastballs. 25 year old who was originally drafted by the Padres. He's a Jacksonville, Florida native and spent his whole career with the Padres 2012 through 2018. Ended up getting traded to the Mets. He was traded Cleveland to New York a couple of off seasons ago in exchange for Kevin Ploiecki. And it's a good start for Pawtucket. There's a base hit to center for Zhu Wei Lin. Jim, just like uh, the play that ended the game last Thursday against Buffalo. Kind of. <laughs> well, guys, Zue Lin was the only other member of the Pawtucket lineup last week to have a hit. Josh Akami had the three hits and the two home runs until Zue's walk-off double. So now it's C.J. Chatham as we get to the portion of Billy McMillan's order where you see some super prospects for Boston and Chatham and then Bobby Dahlbeck is on deck. That was a great game we had last week, too. We've had two of them in our pseudo spring training in these virtual games a couple of weeks ago. Paw Sox lost in a walk-off fashion at virtual Fenway. That ball is caught. How about that play in right field by Jason Krizan? And in fair territory, too. That otherwise would have been a hit for Chatham. We reset the lineup for you for the Paw so Lynn at first with one out and Dahlbeck coming up to the plate. So in their exhibition season that we've had on these Thursday late afternoon productions for you on Twitch, Paw Sox have lost the game and then they won the game last week. 
now ready for the virtual International League's E-League season. Dahlbeck in a right, but foul. Oh, you were right, Josh. That tumbling catch by Krizan, if he misses it, it's a run and Chatham's at third base. Big Bobby Dahlbeck, one of the candidates you'd think at some point to be playing. People have talked about first base for the Boston Red Sox if and when we play in 2020. And some of the most prolific power you'll find really anywhere, but especially in this organization. Good at bat here against Walker Lockett. Yeah, that'd be quite the two. Moreland and Dahlbeck platooning. The 2-2. In the dirt. Nice stop by Rene Rivera to keep Lynn in place. And so we'll see if Zue is running on a 3-2 pitch. He is holding. And ball four. Good start here for Pawtucket. That was a patient at bat by Bobby. I mean, guys, I think that's something the organization is going to want to see a lot more from Dahlbeck because he's going to get pitched like that where they're going to want him to chase. And he did. He laid off some close pitches where he did not chase. Now, Rusne in the right field. Zan is not going to get it. And the Sox have him loaded up. It's a bloop single for Castillo. Take a look at this swing here, Jim. It looked like he got jammed a bit, sort of an inside-out swing, and Castillo just dumps it in front of Krizan and right, and now the Paw Sox with an immediate threat here in the first inning. And the man who was the offense star in the Buffalo win last week, it's Akami, to the left side and through for a hit, and the Paw Sox are armored. Boy, Akami, he remains red hot in these virtual games. A little fist pump. The Paw Sox take a one lead. It's five for nine now, guys, in the virtual games. Great job, too, by Akami on a pitch in the outside corner, waited back, and he went with it the other way. Base is still loaded for the designated hitter, Jansen Witte. Late on the fastball by Lockett. About this start, only out that's here as recorded, was on a diving catch in right field. We had a chance to visit with Jansen Witte yesterday in a Billy's Bunch production. Live that for you in a few. Off speed from Lockett, nothing in two. It was showing off for us some of his woodworking that he's been doing in the offseason in his home in Texas. Got him looking. Witte. Could not get the bat off his shoulder. It's a big Josh, second out. Josh, I expected him to reveal your picture on one of those Witty's Wood. <laughs> I didn't get the order in in time. We'll have to work on that for a later episode. Yeah, he's been very crafty with the woodwork. Master craftsman, Jansen Witty. So now it's Marco Hernandez to it. Bases remain loaded. And you'd have to say that if Lockett is able to escape this with just the one run having scored, that might feel like a minor victory for the Mets. Marco gets it through into left field, and the Paw Sox get it done. Boy, like a carbon copy of Akami's hit, the lefties going the opposite way, and it's 2 nothing. Guys, that is the third opposite field base hit of the inning for Pawtucket. Castillo, Akami, and now Hernandez. They're seeing the ball pretty well out of Lockett's hand. Yeah, two outs, too. That's great. Nick Long lines the first pitch back up the middle, and the Paw Sox have some more off. In from third comes and safe at the plate is Ak it's a two-run single for Nick Longy. The Pawsax have a four-nothing lead in the first. Oh, Josh, you just mentioned that Lockett had a chance to get out of this inning. 
And back-to-back two-out hits, producing three runs. The number nine hitter, Centeno, first pitch swinging back to the pitcher. And that will end the frame. Four runs scored, nine men batted. Tanner Houck going to the mound. Let's take a look back at one of the highlights from our Billy's Bunch. While we're looking back at some old videos, we're going we're gonna to go back, back in and take the greatest hits for whom, uh, the man for whom this chat is labeled. I mean, it's Billy's Bunch. So we're going to go back and revisit one of the great Major League moments for our manager, Mr. McMillan. Young this ben. is in the ALDS. Young Billy. <laughs> and then we're going to get the reaction from, from his players. Let's take a look at Pedro pitching to Billy McMillan. Martinez out of the stretch. Singleton here's the old one pitch. Base hit right field. Singleton rounding third. Here's Nixon up the ball, and Singleton will score without a throw. And Billy McMillan singles to right, and the A's are down by one. Red Sox four, Athletics three, and they're going nuts at the Coliseum. All right, let's open the floor. Who wants to crit, uh, critique Billy's at bat there? Can't can't critique a whole lot. He got hit by Pedro. He got a hit. <laughs> yeah. Pedro out of the game. I'd say can't critique anything right there. Wind was blowing. <laughs> I know you've talked Billy to Pedro about that moment since you guys both started working in the Red Sox organization. Am I right? Yeah, and and, and he um, he said that he felt sorry for me and it was charity. And if you'd like to see the full version of what was about our show last night, that Billy's Bunch, you can check out pawsocks.com. We have a link right on the front of the page there to the entirety of that, which was broadcast through Facebook. So check it out. I had a lot of fun being a part of that premiere, the pilot episode, if you will. You saw Tanner Houck warming up. He's got a full thing lit as he goes to work here at Highland Park. The question as to whether or not Tanner Houck is going to be a starter or a reliever this, but regardless of what role he is asked to fill, he is one of the top pitching prospects. This is Andres Jimenez. He's behind Owen. There's that devastating Houck is his bread and butter Jimenez is a speedster, first year at a triple, and he strikes out three pitches, and Tanner Houck takes care of Speedy Jimenez. Yeah, I think why some of the organization like him as a reliever is just that fastball slider, but he is a bulldog on the mound, so that's why you, you could see him as a starter as well. Max Moroff and then Yoenis Cespedes for the Syracuse Mets. More off, an IL veteran, a lot of time with Indianapolis, last year with Columbus. So he was in the Indians system before the Mets. Boy, we haven't seen a yet from how five pitches, five strikes. That was the slider again. I think virtual center looks pretty similar to real Tanner Houck, don't you think? Yeah, I think it's the same glove, too. O2. There's the first ball from Hauk. But if you look at the Red Sox major league pitching situation, there's more of a need for starting pitching than for relief pitching at this point. More offs alive. And so 
Tanner was floated out there as one of the options to take either the fourth or fifth spot in the big league rotation coming out of spring training. More off, fouls off another one. You know what, guys? He might be that second guy in after an opener. That might be a good role for him. Three, four innings. Did he get a piece? He did. He just got a piece of that slider. Five. And what is it about this slider that has been so prolific for help? You see, fastball 95, it's two and two. What is it about that slider, gentlemen? Well, Josh, I think that previous pitch goes to show it well. He can throw high heat like that, and then he can have a hard, tight slider that just drops off the table. And there's strikeout number two. Tanner Houck with a terrific start to this outing. I think what he does that impresses me the most with that piece, he makes it move in different directions, varieties. It's not the same coming out of that right arm every time he throws it. This is a fun matchup here with Ioannis Cespedes on a rehab. The Mets sending him to Syracuse for this. Virtual opener on the ground to Marco Hernandez. It's a one, two, three start for Tanner Howe. Paw Sox have a four nothing lead after an inning. Well, we have a message for you coming from our first at the Rhode Island Department of Health. As we get ready for the bottom of the first inning, spring is here, and our boys of summer wish they shower you with the host of family memories. While we wait together, the Paw Sox want to thank some of the unsung heroes of our community. The good people who work at the grocery stores like Dave's Marketplace, Shaw's, and Stop and Shop, who make sure we are only taking two packages. We thank you for performing it. We don't always remember to thank you for, especially now. We appreciate you and your role with our roles. That's from the Island Department of Health. Let's go to the second, turn things over to Mike Antonellis for the play-by-play. -play. Thanks, Josh. Well said. We do thank everybody, all the unsung heroes. Uh, Pawtucket sent all nine to the plate in the first. We like that. And Zue gets things started again. And how about that? He's two for two with a bloop single. First pitch off Walker Lockett, who's now given up six hits. You see his line? Yeah, and I think... This is one of the advantages that teams are going to have in this international E-League competition. When you are controlling the team, as our own Tim Quidadamo is, he can swing early as he's not. I mean, Tim's swinging at the first pitch. He's not yeah. waiting around. And <laughs> I think it's been an advantage for the Paw Sox here against Lockett. Yeah, Guys, Lockett's... Go ahead, Jim. I, I was just about to say, this resembles his... Uh, style at the play when he was playing at Emerson College back in the day. Very aggressive hitter was TQ, as we call him. Well, this is just some bad luck there. It will be a 4-6-3 double play. As that looked like a breaking ball that, that Tim stayed back on. Went. That's what you do with a breaking ball, but that's part of baseball for you. Sometimes you hit it hard and you get penalized. Nice turn here, too, by Jimenez. And the stretch at first by the veteran, Matt Adams. Yeah, Jimenez is an excellent defensive player that the Mets see play all over the diamond, not just short. Dahlbeck walks his first time. And look at that, first pitch curveball. So the, the, the sim is it's pretty uh, similar to how you would throw Dahlbeck. That one's off of the pitcher. And Dahlbeck will have an infield hit. That's how Dahlbeck will get an infield hit. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have to check on Walker Lockett here. Look at him go down to a knee. Injury to virtual Walker. Well, Jim, you know this. Dahlbeck hitting a ball at you would have to hurt. Really would. That one took one hard hop off the grass and up and on a Lockett, but he appears to be okay. Castillo singled and scored. And Pawtucket scored three runs with two outs after Lockett struck out Witte. Marco Hernandez and Nick Longy delivered run scoring hits. 
And Ruzne with a ground ball to Jimenez in the fourth set. Six to four in Pawtucket. Wow, they don't score despite two hits, but they have a four nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the second on our virtual E League. All right, we got the Mike Tamboro reading of the longest game coming up. Almost 40 years ago, the Paw Sox played the longest game in the history of baseball. And Steve Krasner wrote a children's book that I want to read to you today. It was illustrated by Susan Stockweather. The Longest Game. It was a baseball game. One team won, one team lost. But it was a special baseball game, so special, it was even given its own name, the longest game. In the history of professional baseball, no two teams ever played a longer game than the minor league Pawtucket Red Sox and the Rochester Red Wings. They played in 1981 at McCoy Stadium in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. All right, we have a link to that, uh, pawsocks.com, if you want to watch that, or on YouTube, our YouTube channel. Well, fitting for the NFL draft tonight, Tim Tebow, former star at Florida, leads it off against Tanner Houck. And ball one misses inside. And, and guys, uh, the draft's going to be well watched tonight <laughs> in our quarantine life. I would Can't think we're going to see... Gonna right see Sorry, Jim. We're going to see all sorts of viewership records for that NFL draft coverage. Nice play by Tanner Hawk to get Tim Tebow. And Tim there's... was a first-round pick back yeah. in his day, coming out of the University of Florida. And a very short-lived New England Patriot. Hmm. Now, Matt Adams, well-traveled. That is his vintage Bill Belichick. That press conference for the Tim Tebow signing is priceless. If you want to see uh, Grouchy Bill, it's nothing in one with a high heat. Guys, Adams is your prototypical player, I think, in this era. Low average, high strikeouts, but high home runs. His major league career, he's hit 116 home runs parts of eight years. Yeah, that's what he's up there to do. He, he doesn't get cheated on his cuts. He's got a World Series ring now. He was a big contributor to that Nationals team a year ago. Hit 20 home runs. Good clubhouse guy. That's hit to first right at the bag, and Akami takes it. So Tanner Houck with a good start. And this is what you love to see from him, guys. It's either been strikeout or ground outs. That's his game when he's on. And his control thus far of the fastball slider combo has been terrific. Nice uh, little peek over his glove. That great view they showed us. Will Toffee, ball one outside. Toffee was born in the Cape. How about that? Born in Wareham, Mass. Actually played in the Cape. So deep down, he probably roots for the Red Sox. Hits it hard to center field. And Zue. Makes the catch and a perfect inning for Tanner Houck. Now, as we head to the third inning, we ask all of you for questions from the chat, and we're going to answer that at the end of the fifth inning. So we'll have that coming up at the end of the fifth. And as we head to the top of the third, the Paw Sox will have Josh Ockamy, Jansen Witte, and Marco Hernandez. And to describe that, here is Jim Kane. Thank you, Mike Antonellis. So, yes, Josh Ockamy. We'll lead it off against Walker Lockett. The Paw Sox have seven hits through the first two innings. And now Akami drives one out to right center. But there's Brandon Barnes to haul it in. And there's the first out of the inning. I'd love to know the percentage, Jim, of first pitch swings by our Paw Sox virtual manager, Tim Quidadamo. And we're going to talk <laughs> to him about that in just a few moments when he joins us on the broadcast. He's had a game plan, and it's actually worked out very nicely. Yeah, swing of the fastball. It sure has. That one, he lays off. Jansen Witte inside for ball one. Witte 0 for 1. He's the lone strikeout victim thus far for Walker Lockett. 
That one's driven in the air to center, and it hangs up long enough for Barnes to come in and snag it. So two balls to center and two outs here in the third. So will there be statistics, E-League statistics, on who's the best front office player? Because Tim's going to be in the running. Tim should have retired after that top of the first inning. <laughs> All downhill <laughs> from there, right? <laughs> it was the top of the first in which Pawtucket scored four times. They sent everybody in the lineup up to the plate, and they had five hits. Hernandez had one of those five hits. It was an RBI single to left. Oh, now with Nick Longy on deck. Count rising here for Lockett, 34. Three and one. Not many pitches thrown inside by Lockett. When he misses, it's been away from both sides of the plate. Lined and caught by the shortstop Jimenez. And it's a one, two, three, top of the third for Walker Lockett. And through two and a half, the Paw Sox with a four nothing lead for Tanner Houck as he goes back to work in the bottom half of the inning. Bottom third of the order. It's been six up, six down thus far for the right hander. Eric Barnes, who was busy in the top half of the inning, will lead things off in the bottom of the third. The 20 pitches for Tanner Houck. He first misses downstairs. I remember talking to Tanner when he first got moved to the bullpen towards the end of last season when it looked like that might be a need for the Red Sox. And I think there was a little bit of frustration because ultimately it really does seem like Tanner wants to be a starting pitcher. That's what he was his whole career until last season. This one's fouled off to the left, and you rarely heard him complain about it, and he made the transition rather smoothly. Usually, you see starters going to relief, and it's a bit of an adjustment, as we saw with a guy like Mike Shawarin, but Tanner Houck didn't really have a whole lot of issues. Barnes chases, and it's a full count. Yeah, and I think you can dangle, too. If you have a chance to get to the big leagues quicker, you, you'll certainly do whatever they ask. Old foul, and the count remains full. But you, I, saw him, I yeah. was say, you saw him a lot more than you did in Pawtucket when you were calling his games important. Yeah, I the, the one thing that... I always looked at with him is his velocity didn't dip, you know, fifth, sixth inning. He's still throwing 95. Uh, now all the guys I'd ask about his slider, they just said it has movement on it. They've just never seen. It's almost like a heavy slider. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think you can cap guys off and just say uh, he's going to be a reliever. I think you let him start as long as he can. That is the first Syracuse net to reach against Hauk, and now Rene Rivera grounds it to Akami, goes to second for one, relay the first in time. So just as soon as the first base runner reaches, he is erased, and now there are two down. Let's take a look at the replay here. Me starting a nice 3-6-3. Three, three. That's the wheel and the relay from Chatham, and that's part of the game that Akami's worked so hard on over the years is his defense. Really well played right that time against a slow footed in Rivera by getting the first base. The bases are clear. There are two outs. And now the number nine man, Jason Krizan, steps to the plate. Krizan has been at the AAA level for each of the last five years and has yet to taste any big league action. I saw him pitch in a game, Jim, double A. He'll do it all. He's in right field to use. Going inside. One and two. He knows his way across the International League West Division, does <laughs> Krizan. Four years with Strike three called over the inside corner. Hauk. 
paints a fastball beautifully in at the knees. Krizan didn't think so, but he takes with him the third strikeout for Tanner Houck, who has faced the minimum over the first three innings so far. As we play on here in game number one of this three-game E-League series, and to tell us more about that and joining us now is our manager of Paw Sox Productions, Tim Kudadamo. And to start that off, we'll go back to Josh Maurer with the play-by-play. Thank you, walk-off Jim. And here comes Nick Longy, who's got the big hit in the game thus far. Two-run, two-out single in the first inning. There you see Walker Lockett. Tim Quidadamo, thanks so much for double duty here. You're both batting and talking to us at the moment. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, guys. How are you? We're good. Could... We're happy you gave us a lead. <laughs> yeah, could be better, but I'll take 4 nothing for now. Tell us about this international E-League. What is the thought process behind what's going on? So all all of the uh, teams in the International League are sort of starving for content, and I think everyone in America and the world really is starving for any sort of baseball content. So we did what we could. Um, I'd like to give a shout-out to Adam Marco in uh, Scranton, Wilkes-Barre with the Rail Riders. He really spearheaded this whole thing as I strike out on a very high fastball. Um <laughs> but, <laughs> but great play by play he he organized this whole deal uh reached out to all of the production managers around the international league and uh set up a schedule for us and i we voted on what we thought would be the best format a lot of people had different ideas and we ended up settling on what you're seeing today juan centeno takes that one just off the plate are we going to attribute you chasing that pitch to answering the question at the same time? I'm not an excuse guy, but let's go with that. <laughs> Centeno yanks it foul. I would. It's... I don't know how you could do both. I could not play and talk. Yeah. <laughs> Supposed to have an empty mind as you hit. <laughs> oh, it doesn't get much more empty than just talking to you guys, right? <laughs> 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 There's a hit for Tim and for Juan Centeno and for the virtual Paw Sox. Centeno has his first knock. It's the eighth hit that you've gotten off of Walker Lockett, Tim. He's leaving a lot of stuff over the middle of the plate. Uh, one of the rules of the International E-League is that we play on veteran difficulty. And I've been playing MLB The Show. I think my first one was 2007. So I've been playing it for over a decade now and honestly if we're playing on veteran i'd look out for me if i was other teams nice play by max moroff here in the hole from second base the ball pulled by zuway lynn they get the lead runner santeno so two out and here comes cj chatham yeah so now rookie what? would be the beginning right veterans the second easiest yep exactly what's the thought process Tim, behind how we're going to keep track of all this? Are there going to be standings? Are there going to be champions at the end of it? How, how do you, how do we do this moving forward? Yeah, so uh, another part of the rules is after every game, um, clubs aren't required, but they're encouraged to stream them on Twitch. So I thought, what better way to integrate it uh, while we were already... Oh, get down, ball. Let's go. As we were that already... Does that's a fair ball for Chatham. Are you going to score Zue Lynn, I'm testing Tim? it. Me... Oh! The relay, he's out. It goes Krizan to Moroff to Rivera for the out. And... We're going to have to question the third base coach after that one. <laughs> We're to the bottom of the fourth, and it's still 4 nothing Pawtucket. As you see the top of the order do up for the Syracuse Smith. What was your thought process there, Tim? Hey, relays are difficult, so I had I had two down there. Chatham, looking back, I probably should have held him at third with Dahlbeck coming up, but Chatham hit a ball right down the line, thought it would roll around in the corner a little bit more than it did. I was already waving Suway home, and it takes two good throws to get someone out with a relay, and the Mets just had it there. Good fastball from Hauk to Andres Jimenez, who struck out to begin the first. So we were talking about what 
is going to end up moving forward with this international e-league and how teams are going to play one another in three game series. Nice play by Chad to take care of the speedy Jimenez. Yeah, that's a, exactly the right, out. Josh. Uh, so one game of the series is this one that you're watching right now. The second game of the series won't actually be myself or any representative from our front office playing. Uh, it will be a representative of the Mets playing against the computer on their own end. So technic technically, we won't have anything to do with the directing, with the between innings content. It'll be game two is just the Mets, which is a breath of fresh air for me that I don't have to be running this stream out of my bedroom like I am now for them. Uh, and then game three, MLB The Show doesn't let you play with minor league teams online. So game three will be head-to-head -head with the big league clubs. Max Moroff has the first hit of the game for Syracuse off of Tanner Houck as he gets that one into right field. The one out base runner for Syracuse. That coming after three and a third hitless from Tanner. And here comes Yoani Cespedes, the big league rehabber. Yes, we even have major league rehab assignments here in our international league. So it sounds like a cool thing that all of the teams just about in the IL are participating in. If fans who are watching our Twitch today, TQ, if they want to follow along as we go in further in this three game series and then as other series come up, what's the best way to get the information to follow the If you follow uh, other international league teams on their social media, they've been putting out uh, some reminders and when they're live, I don't know off the top of my head what exactly the Twitch channels are. Um, I know the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs are at Iron Pigs Show. Uh, Charlotte Knights are sometimes in our chat room. They are pretty active on Twitch as well. Uh, so it's a lot of just engaging on social media, checking out other teams' websites just like ours. We're constantly updating it with when we're going live, what we're doing when we go live, because we do have a couple of different sort of things uh just like last night we had the billy's bunch which you did an excellent job on josh uh and was a lot of fun to watch um but yeah i would follow other international league teams just to see what they're doing here's hernandez to chat him on the first and they double off success that is nice job tim four six three and another scoreless inning for tanner hauk so it is still a 4 nothing Pawtucket lead as we are getting ready for the fifth. Take a look back at something the Paw Sox have been doing on Wednesdays. They, in honor of our first responder Wednesdays, have taken the opportunity during our coronavirus outbreak to help those who are making such a big out there in our local community. This has been a Wednesday staple, right, guys, where the Paw Sox and their executive chef and his staff have been providing meals to local EMTs, fire department, medical workers. We, we know they could all use a meal these days. And so on Wednesdays, as part of the National Grid first responders, they've been providing lunches. Really needs to. All right, for the fifth inning, I'm going to turn things over to Mike Antonello. All right, Josh, th thank you. And well said, as Bobby Dahlback has reached twice, and he hits it hard to right field, but Krasan is there to make the catch. Boy, Bobby hit that one. Well, well, Tim hit it, but it's virtual Dahlback. One out. Dahlback doing most of the work. <laughs> Here is Rusne Castillo. And you know what's great, guys? We're simulating, look at we're getting into nighttime. We started. It was light out. Rusne takes ball one. And I, I think speaking of that, Mike, I'm impressed with how much Highland Park are today looks like Sears' normal home, NBT Bank Stadium. I feel like we're in the queues. The way that's where the Paw Sox just would have been this week. They would have finished out their seasoning road trip with three games there in Syracuse. Yeah, you think about the bonus today would have been an off day, so you're getting baseball. 
Castillo goes the other way down the right field line, and that's a fair ball. So Rusne into the corner. We're going to say it, have an too. easy double. We're going to say it, too, here, boys. Well, the third base coach there was excellent stopping Rusne. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I get a lot of credit to either TQ or this Pawtucket lineup because their approach has been phenomenal. A number of opposite field base hits and another one that time from Rusne. And I guess 10 hits, gentlemen, was enough. The Syracuse Mets coaching staff. That's the end of the line here for Pocket. And yeah, you can well, see fresh friction in his virtual face. Yeah, I was going to say lost some hair from that start. <laughs> and Erasmo Ramirez, we've, uh, we've seen this guy before. We'll take over for Syracuse. Well, this is interesting because Erasmo was the valuable starting pitcher for the Pawsocks all last year. And a lot of these guys, like Akami, they'll have the book on. I certainly do. Book there is a single to left. And runners at the corners. This is, if Josh Akami can do that, his batting average guys will go up 30, 40 points. Guys, his first single in the first inning, it was almost identical to this one here in the fifth inning. An off-speed pitch that he waited back on. It was down and away. And Akami was still able to barrel it up. Nice five for his last seven. And now Witte, who was hitless, he lines one on the right side. Another base hit, three in a row for the Paw Sox. Castillo crosses the plate. Hitless no more. And it's 5 nothing. So Witte's excited. See, he's in the hit column plus an RBI. All right, Tim, take us through your first pitch swing approach because we're seeing it time and again. So on veteran, <laughs> a lot of times they're going first pitch fastball, and a lot of times it's going to be right over the heart of the plate or at least catch a lot of the plate. It's not really going to be on the corners. It's not going to uh, kind of nibble at the edges. It's, it's going to catch a lot of it or it's going to be a ball. If you can't tell, I've put a lot of hours into this game over the years, so I kind of I kind of know the tendencies that they put in each year. I'm still playing on Little League mode. <laughs> Here's Seawalt throwing. So Ramirez greeted rudely back-to-back -back hits. Marco knocked in a run on the first with two outs, and he sends it down into the left field side, and that will be caught. But a lot of opposite field hitting as well for Pawtucket. Two gone for Nick Longy. I think Guys, as we saw last year, Erasmo Ramirez, when he is on, he's got that sinker working and that slider combo too. But similar to Lockett, Erasmo's left some pitches up, and Pop Sox have been able to capitalize. And that one was elevated too, but Hernandez just got under it. Nick Longy, a two-run hit and a strikeout. Let's see if he can come through with another two-out hit, and he will into center field. Josh Akami will hold up. Not the fastest guy in the lineup, but this gives Centeno a chance to hit a grand salami. Yeah, he has virtual Billy McMillan coaching third base. Learned his lesson last inning. Didn't want to have another frame end with an out at home. Holding up Akami, who's not the fleetest of foot, but Three of the four hitters who have faced Erasmo have singles. Isn't that weird, guys? With two outs, a base hit usually scores a run, but he hit the ball too hard in that situation to get it in. Centeno's one for two, a line out and a single. A run in, and this one's blasted to left. Cespit is over, and he makes the catch. And Pawtucket will settle for one run in the inning, but they had a bunch of hits as we're halfway through, and they lead it five to nothing. The Paw Sox Foundation is raising funds to support individuals and organizations at the forefront of the COVID-19 pandemic, including first responders, healthcare workers, food banks, and food distribution center, as well as other local charities in need. Please click the image toward the bottom of your screen to donate. We thank you for your contribution to helping 
the greater Paw Sox community during this unusual time. Stay safe, everyone. Well, it's been all Pawtucket on the road. And Tim Tebow will lead things off against Tanner Hawk, who was dealing. And Tebow lines out. That's how we begin the bottom of the fifth. You look at what Tim Tebow did in his first season at the AAA level last year, guys. Hit just 163. I think a lot of people thought that was going to be the end of his baseball playing career. But he's back at it, trying for another year. We know how mentally tough he is. Strike one to Adams. But it's something I, I just never saw happening, Tim Tebow playing baseball. Bounce to short, Chatham. We'll throw out Matt Adams, and there are two outs. I like what Chatham did there, guys. He knew that Matt Adams is one of the slowest runners you'll have. <laughs> he took his time. I think Chatham patted his glove twice before he threw that <laughs> ball to first and still got him by 10 steps. That means that this virtual game is very realistic. That's terrific. It really is. Uh, they simulate everything now. And a strike at the end of the fifth. We'll answer any chat questions through Twitch. I would imagine that Twitch has gotten a big bump in views during the quarantine period. Good changeup. Had him way out in front. I can't Did wait you... to see what our fans have written in for us to answer today. Yeah. If, Ch if Hall can master that pitch, he'll be a lethal starter. And that's past Dahlbeck. Good sliding attempt. And by Longy. And Will Toffee with two outs will have a double. Don't you think, Jim, if, if Hauk has a changeup to go along with that fastball and slider? So just give hitters something else to think about. It would make them a little bit less predictable, although the fastball and slider are a lethal uh, combo. He's featured it a couple of different times, but... If he can improve on that, man, Tanner Howe can really take things to the next level. And this one is lined right to first. Josh Ockamy, who we've talked about a lot offensively, having a good game tonight, is we're going to take some questions. Pawtucket leading. Look at that, 13 hits. And I believe there's a question for me. What's the difference between AAA and double A talent. I would say for pitchers, guys, it's consistency, it's location. Guys throw 88 to 90, but they can paint it all over the place. And I think that's what the hitters struggle with when they go up. But I, I think it's the consistency is the biggest thing between levels. Well, I think too in triple A, you just have so many older guys. Right? Yeah. I mean, yes. at double A and you and I, Mike, have each been fortunate enough to work at both of those levels. I always felt like you're seeing the young upcoming future of baseball at the double-A level, but they're so raw. When you watch an international league game, you're watching guys who are sometimes seven, eight, nine-year veterans who have had significant major league time in their careers. So it's a much different kind of player. It's the more experienced, grizzled, grizzled veteran type. Yeah, and I think the baseball is, is really good. I think sometimes it gets sold short. Um, but like you said, I mean, last year when I was with you, Josh, there was – who did we see in uh, Syracuse? We saw uh, Irvin Santana. I mean, that's a, a big league veteran. All right, Jay, like take us go, – go ahead. Well, go, let's turn it to Jim. I was going to say I like what that Twitch uh, chat screen looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, guys. Zhu Lin first pitch swinging against his former teammate, and he grounds to second. We've got a couple more questions here, and I think, TQ, if you're still on, these will probably be geared for you. One is the timing of the games. Are they all today? Are they over the next couple of days? And how many games does each team play? Yeah, that's a great question. So they're definitely not all today because much like you guys 
broadcasting and you all in the chat, I am going to watch the NFL draft tonight. So they will not all be today. <laughs> I think the plan is on these Thursday nights, uh, I'm going to play against the computer in our sort of regularly scheduled television broadcast style streams. Uh, and then I'm hoping if clubs can cooperate with this schedule, it might differ from club to club depending on who we're playing week to week. But I'm hoping we could do Tuesday nights uh, that I could play mano y mano against the representative from the other international league teams. So do we know then, Tim, when game two of this is going to be? Because that'll be the game controlled. I'm hoping it's going to be Tuesday. I reached out uh, to the productions manager over at Syracuse. I'm waiting to hear back. I'm not going to lie. I responded to the email a little bit late just because we were working on the Billy Bunch and some of our other endeavors this week. So I reached out to him earlier today. So, again, hoping it's next Tuesday, but you never know. However, with that being said, we will for sure have these Thursday broadcasts um, every Thursday. We've been doing them at 5 o'clock. Uh, we've talked maybe about in the summer when it gets more to a traditional baseball season. Maybe we have it later at 7 so everyone uh, gets to kind of unwind from their day of work if they are an essential worker and are fighting on the front lines or if they get to unwind from their day of working from home, get to eat dinner and relax a little bit before we start playing. Oh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, our own Tim Quidadamo answering all your questions about the International E-League. And, oh, he's also built up a 5 nothing lead for Pataki Tiki. We'll let you get back to work. Thanks for uh, taking some time to talk to us. All right. Thank you very much, guys. And our Hauk to face eight, nine, and one here in the sixth. Rene Rivera leading it off for Syracuse. Rivera, this is a guy who has been around forever. He is a journeyman, 36 years old. This would be his 20th professional season. And he lines one to center. Len charging and reaches up to grab it. Yeah, if you can catch guys, you'll stick around. Rene Rivera hit 25 home runs with Syracuse last year, believe it or not. He wow. was among the IL leader. May have been a guy who benefited from the new baseball that was at both the AAA <laughs> and Major League level. <laughs> That's I a great point a fair there, assumption. <laughs> Chris Zan takes a strike. I will say that you cannot judge that until you've seen it in person. And when I saw it the first day, I could not believe the difference. It is unbelievable. In a miss, there's the slider and how get ahead, nothing in two. Up in the upper right-hand corner, as we've had each of the last couple of weeks, our sponsors here in Pawtucket, as you see the scrolling sign. Strike three called over the inside corner. That is the fourth strikeout of the night for Tanner Houck. Krizan wasn't happy with it. Two strikes. <laughs> Houck has been so economical. This is going to be his 60th pitch with two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, and I think, guys, that the question, pardon me, Jim, it's how much Tanner is stretched out for this virtual start? You know, does he have the stamina, even at this low pitch count, to go into a seventh and or eighth? I thought you made a great point earlier where how could potentially be a guy who piggybacks an opener and if – you could just picture, you know, him piggybacking with a guy maybe like Kyle Hart, who isn't the hardest thrower. He's more of a finesse guy. And then you come in with a right-hander in Hauk who throws hard and has that nasty slider. 
that make life awfully difficult for opposing hitters. It's kind of what Jalen Beeks did. Tampa Bay was a little indecisive what to do with him. Out space is clear, and the one twos grounded to the left side. Dahlbeck will throw out Jimenez. It's another one, two, three inning for Tanner Houck, who has been excellent here tonight. Hoss Sox cruising right along as they lead five to nothing. And this past Monday at McCoy, we had Milk Monday presented by Ocean State Job Lot. We've had a few of these food drive through giveaways, for lack of a better phrase, and it all started with our friends at Ocean State Job Lab approaching us a few weeks ago. And Mike Tamburo, our vice chairman, spearheading that campaign as well. And it's been a rousing success. We've had a number of cars come through with members of the Paw Sox front office and employees of Ocean State Job Lot, as you see there in the slideshow, handing out pallets of food. Milk was the biggest item on Monday. You see bread there as well, but all in all, a great cause. As we work through these difficult times, as we move along to the seventh, let's turn it back over to Josh Maurer. Thank you much, Jim. Seawald and Shreve getting loose in the pen as our old buddy Erasmo Ramirez continues on the bump for the Syracuse Mets and his old teammate Josh Akami. His first hit was an RBI single in the first. But if you're just joining us, each of Akami's hits have gone to the opposite field, which is very rare for the big lefty. And he goes in that direction again, but this one's hanging up. Barrett Barnes back on the edge of the warning track to make the catch. So one out in the visitor's seventh inning. Well, a lot of Red Sox personnel are now with the Mets, so I wonder if that's part of why Erasmo Ramirez is with New York. You know, I really enjoyed having Erasmo for the whole season last year as a valuable member of the Paw Sox. He was just a joy to be around and a true professional on the mound. That guy, no matter if he had his best stuff or not, he was going to give you everything he had every time he was handed baseball. Really a workhorse. Jansen Witte has an RBI hit. He's one for the Mets picking up Ramirez in the offseason after the Red Sox chose not to re-sign. Big league time with the Mariners and the Rays for Rasmo Ramirez. One ball, two strikes on Jansen Witte. Well, we're getting closer and closer to real sports news coming tonight mike you were referencing earlier the nfl draft first round coming up live in just a bit and i said this earlier i think it's going to break all sorts of ratings records people are starving for actual sports news something they can watch and witty strikes out against erasmo for the second out of the inning now, who would have thought years ago i i remember when the baseball draft was done over the phone in the clubhouses and people want to watch a draft, but it is exciting. They're going to be live from Roger Goodell's basement. <laughs> the commission announcing the picks. Yeah, I'm sure Guys, he's I, got a man cave, right? A small little place. Does I think that's the most interesting storyline in this entire draft, guys. I know people have talked about, you know, the Dolphins making some noise. Where's Tua gonna go? But I think this whole technological aspect to it, I think, is the biggest story to see how it's all going to flow. Hernandez into the gap in left center field, and Marco has his second hit of the night. It's a two-out double for Marco Hernandez, and that hit number 14 for the Paw Sox. So that's it for Erasmo, and here comes Paul Seawall. That's his big league time last year for the New York Mets. Back and forth between Syracuse and Flushing, New York out in Queens City Field. He spent some time up there last year. So we see Seawald, the third pitcher of the game for Syracuse, and he's in to face Nick Longy. Two 
two and nothing to count on Longy, who's two for three. When we've seen Longy in our Thursday Twitch broadcast the last three weeks, these guys looked really good in the virtual. Yep, playing in the outfield. In a right field for Longy. The Paw Sox are going to hold up Marco Hernandez at third base. There's the th third hit of the game for Nick Longy. Our Paw Sox manager, Tim Quidadamo, continues to have that opposite field stroke going. Now Centeno, that's going to slice foul. Over goes Cespedes and unable to catch up. Runners on the corners. That one. Well, I'm having some internet issues, guys. Maybe you can pick up and tell me what just. Well, pitch, Josh. All right. Must have bounced in there. So the Paw Sox get run number six. Hey, this is a uh, modern technology. At its finest. All three of us broadcasting <laughs> from our respective living rooms. And I had a little bit of an internet hit there, so I did I did not see that pitch. That one in the left field for a hit. Will they send Longy? No, they will not. And they're on the corners again for the Paw Sox. You know, Jim, to go back on what you said about the draft, what if something does happen tonight where the time runs out and there's no pick? I'm sure there's some backup plan. For a technical and mistake that'll be, that'll be interesting i mean i'm sure the clock's not gonna go and they won't be able to make a pick but i wonder what they would do zue lynn pops out to in the inning postox get a two out run on a wild pitch and lead it six nothing it's the seventh inning stretch you know what that means presented by our friends at parties Well, we will get another inning of Tanner Howe. Bottom of the seventh, he has only allowed two hits and now has a 6 nothing lead as Max Moroff, Yoeni Cespedes, and Tim Tebow get set to bat for the Syracuse Mets. First game of our international E-League series. So as our manager, Tim Quidadamo, told us, we don't know when game two of this series will be played, but... We certainly can't wait for it <laughs> and hope it's anything like what we've had today. So stay tuned for that. More off one for two. It was a single. And there's hit number three for the Mets just over the head of Dahlbeck. At Longy able to get it in and hold Max Moore up. He's got his second hit of the game. Yeah, two of the three hits. Nice little inside-out swing. You know, I was thinking about the NFL draft and the possible technical issues using the Internet. What if something happens like just happened to me? That one right <laughs> under the glove of Dahlbeck for Cespedes. Now, you guys may have had a better look at it than I. Let's take a look at a replay. Did Bobby have a chance at this? That's that big league exit velocity. Are we scoring that in a hit? We didn't see it on the replay, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it was a hit. Yep. So two hits to begin the inning. As 
claw its way back and Tebow. But yeah, what if somebody loses internet access in the draft headquarters tonight? You guys know it's going to be with the Patriots. It will just, it would be great drama. <laughs> Tebow takes it low. It's 2-0 and as maybe Hauk for the first time all night showing some signs of fatigue. I mean, it's bound to happen, right? I mean, yeah. to be on as long as they're going to be on with all of those rounds. There's going to be a hiccup or two. Tebow 0 for 2. Grounded to the pitcher and lined out to third. Well, we'll be watching along with the rest of the country after we're done here. 3 and 1 on Tim Tebow. There are no outs in the inning. Nice pitch by Hauk. Went to the slider, his bread and butter, to make it a full count. Yeah, Tebow thought he was getting a fastball there. So a big pitch with big Matt Adams waiting on deck. 3-2. Akami, can he start another one? 3-6-3, three, three, a double play. No, 3-6-1, a double play. That's a huge twin killing for the virtual pasta. We are told in our ears... By Tim, we would have watched that replay, but cut that off a little too quickly. But how about it, guys? That's a big double play. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tough day for Tebow. Continues. I was wondering why Syracuse's manager decided to put him in the cleanup hole. This. Matt Adams with a runner at third. Well, Syracuse had two on, nobody out. Tebow at a 3-1 count. So... Shaping up to be a potential big inning. Adams has grounded out twice. You know, the big news yesterday that involved the Red Sox was the final release of Commissioner Manfred's report into the investigation and the sign stealing accusation. And I thought, for the most part, guys, the Red Sox were pretty vindicated. There were no harsh penalties and really no harsh conclusions drawn yeah, Josh, cool. I, I think that's the big thing sorry Mike I think that is the big thing is that these guys now feel vindicated however I would say losing a second round pick in a draft that many feel is going to have short rounds and less players to pick I, I think that's probably the one thing that's going to hurt the most Bill three and two on Matt Adams. Mike, yeah, your thoughts? Yeah, it's a slot of one point four million. So I mean, you can get a good player in that round. Checked up, and it's ball four on Adams, and that's the third man to reach in the inning. Boy, does that make that double play look all the big, all the bigger. Yeah, I saw a lot of people say they didn't lose anything. I wouldn't I wouldn't go that far. I mean, you're still losing a potential impact player. Two outs for Will Tuffy. But I think more than what you would have lost in penalty would have been lost in respect around the game and certainly what people would have thought of your world championship in that 2018 season. Had MLB's investigation found a more serious, found some more serious things to penalize, but they just didn't seem to find that. The shortstop Chatham takes care of Toffee, and that'll end the inning. Tanner Howe through seven scoreless innings here at Highland Park. It's six nothing Pawtucket. And let's turn things back over to Mike Antonellis as we head to the All right, Josh, you're right. Uh, Tanner Houck, outstanding. Seven scoreless innings, just four hits. And that will probably be the end of the line for him. But what an outing. Got the big bats coming up. Chatham, Dahlbeck, Castillo. Paul Sewald misses inside for ball one. You see the attendance here at Highland Park. Just under 7,000. And there's a line drive, base hit to right. Now well, C.J. Chatham going the opposite way. And that's been the theme, guys. Jim, you talked about it earlier. 
the opposite field hitting. By my count here on my box score, I've got 12 of their 18 have gone to the opposite field. Wow. <laughs> There's another opposite field, but foul. But Josh, you're right. Going back to what you talked about in the the reputation and what people think. Look what people thought of the Astros after all of that came out. I mean, it was not good. Strike two to Dahlbeck. And I think that was the fear, is that you'd find things as severe as what A.J. Hinch and Jeff Lunau Astros were accused of. We see a pop-out. But I think, Mike, with Major League Baseball saying the only reason that they've suspended Alex Cora for this season is because of what he had been found guilty of doing with the Astros and nothing to do with his Red Sox tenure, I think that's a big sigh of relief for Boston. Absolutely. Castillo, two hits. He scored twice. And he goes the other way. And another hit. And Jim's keeping track of that. It's 13 of 19 hits now have gone the other way. And a three-hit game for Castillo. Who we know has good power the other way. And that will be another call to the bullpen. Chasen Shreve, the left-hander, will take over. I want to see uh, guys, uh, Pawtucket, get to 20 hits. You get a good feeling they will. You know, I have a feeling that as many games as Tim Quidadamo is playing as the Paw Sox, we're going to see a lot of this. <laughs> We've got a ringer here in charge, apparently. <laughs> well, I mean, well, this guys, has been as one-sided as it can get, Jim. <laughs> well, I, I will just remember. Mind you guys, as a as a fellow teammate of Tim's back in the day at Emerson College, that was one thing that our head coach drilled into our heads was going the opposite way, and then you see it there again. Yep, Akami to deep left, but just short. Now we're good. the teams can't they got to use a front office, right? They're not going to bring in one of these professional gamers to play a game because that will be unfair, unless they're on staff. But apparently there is no rule about that. It could be anybody. Jansen Witte with an RBI single back in the fifth. And Shreve misses outside. You see the bullpen. Nagosik, a former Red Sox farmhand, is getting loose. He was in the Addison Reed trade. That one has not worked out for the Red Sox. This is pretty good guys going over to the Mets. Big swing and a miss. Chatham and Castillo, the base runners. And there's a pop-up to right. Jason Krizan down the line. Just fair, makes the catch. And that will do it for the Paw Sox. Two hits, they leave two. But they're enjoying this one in the virtual simulation, our international E-League game one. They lead 6-0 in time for Sweet Caroline.
I'll start. I'll start with you, Jim. How about uh, Tanner Houck? Seven scoreless. He dominated. He really did, Mike. And Josh, I think, pointed it out last inning. You could see signs of fatigue as the pitch count got up. And other than that, he was excellent. And as we talked about, if he can just develop that third pitch, that changeup, he will be lights out. But as far as this performance, he was excellent. Kevin Lennick, nothing in one. Josh, we saw a little bit of Kevin last year, and I know he got hurt near the end of the season. Yeah, he was a former independent league guy, Red Sox found. He's got a very good arm. Yeah. Part of the puzzle for Lennick is harnessing it and getting his control where you'd like it to be. But really, we only saw him for a brief moment healthy with Pawtucket when he came up from your team in Portland. Yeah, he works with Tom House as the guy that fixes him. I mean, he's worked with a lot of people. And look at that slider. A walk in a line out for Barnes, and it's Rivera and Krizan, lower third of the order for Syracuse. Seven scoreless for Hawk, four hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and punch to right for Ruzne. And there's one out. Do you guys know the story with Lennox? I mean, it's incredible that he went to an open tryout in Texas. I mean, the odds of getting picked up are not very high, and he made that, got signed, and then ends up with the Red Sox after being with a couple of organizations. It's a great story. Here's Rivera, strike one. Those are the kind of stories that you see, and if the rumored contraction of some of the minor league teams ends up coming to fruition, you fear that you'll see fewer And it's swing. Spots. And, yeah. I did see in that article by Baseball America that they do want to keep those potential cities alive with some form of baseball that MLB would fund. So who knows what that would look like? 0 2 and a foul ball. Rivera just a tad in front of that one. Renee's hit into a double play and fly it out. Check swing and a high fastball. He held up. You know, Chris Martin, a former Red Sox farm man, he has the same kind of story as Lennox. From rags to riches. And that one is hit down the right field line. Foul ball. Look at the, the uh, it's completely simulated guys into nighttime here at Highland Park. Swing and a miss. Good fastball. 94, and he buried it down, and there are two outs. Perfect pitch. Good stuff from Kevin Lennick, picking up right where Tanner Houck left off. You saw only 82 pitches for Houck to get through seven innings. Virtual Tanner was virtuoso today. Good for him. Good guy. File back. He joined us on our first virtual broadcast. He's one of those uh, big Call of Duty guys, along with Chatham and so many big league guys. There's a foul ball outside of first. Well, Krizan has been called out twice. Let's see if Lennox can make it three times, almost. You know, Paw Sox and Cruz control. That's strike three. And Krizan, not happy. He thinks he's still in the box. Perfect eighth for Kevin Lennick. Pawtucket continues to roll. We head of the ninth inning. Here's Jim Kane. Thank you, Mike Antonellis. And it's a 6 nothing game. But, boy, it sure feels like it's 12, 13, 14 nothing. It feels a lot larger than that with the 19 hits for Pawtucket. And now Marco Hernandez pops up. And it'll be handled by the shortstop Jimenez for the first out. Yeah, I agree with you, Jim. It, I think it's the hits. So many hits makes it feel like more runs. The Paw Sox have only gone down one, two, three once. And that was back in the third inning. They went one, two, three, and every other inning since. They've had runners on. 
Nick Longy swings and misses at a high fastball. Maybe it's because the Paw Sox had a better virtual spring training than the virtual Syracuse Mets. Yeah. <laughs> they, <played>. I... <laughs> <laughs> they got some reps in. Game reps as Longy flies out to center field and there are two away in the ninth. They played those two great games each of the previous couple of Thursday nights. Each of them ending in walk-offs, a loss, then a win. Doesn't look like we're headed that way tonight. This one has been in control from the first inning. Looks like the Paw Sox are going to take a 1-0 series lead in this three-game set in the E-League series against the Mets. And there's a pop-out to shallow center that's chased down by Jimenez. That's the second 1-2-3 inning of the night. By Mets pitching. We'll go to the last of the night. Last chance for Syracuse. Go Tapia is going to come in and he will take over and he will try to close out a Pawtucket victory. And Lennox worked a scoreless eighth inning, who of course came on in relief for Tanner Houck. So Tapia to face the top of this Mets order in the bottom of the ninth. Jimenez 0 for 3. Grounded out his last time up. Well, the story with Domingo Tapia has always been the big arm. Huge fastball. We saw him hitting triple digits on the radar gun consistently in his first season with the Paw Sox. On the third baseline and foul. I think the question has always been his secondary stuff. Does he have a put away pitch other than that fastball? Otherwise, no matter how hard you can throw it, guys at this level can hit it. Three called over the outside corner. Well, that wasn't the hard stuff from Domingo. That was the soft stuff. He painted that beautifully for the first out. Yeah, nice changeup, I think. Right, Mike? That's the second pitch for Top. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes guys throw 98, but to the hitter, it doesn't look 98. It looks slower. It was the seventh strikeout for Pawtucket pitching. Houck had four. Lennox had a pair last inning. Now one down for Moroff. Moroff's had a good night. He's two for three. missing the inside edge at 95. Doesn't miss that time. Pretty similar to the previous pitch, but this one's a strike. Popped up. Right by the plate, sent Seno with the catch. And the Paw Sox are an out away from a victory. Yeah, I'm trying to think, guys. As impressive as the offense has been, really, I think our player or players of the game have to come from the pitching side of this. And I, I would be leaning towards Tanner Houck tonight as our Paw Sox star of the game. Yeah, he set the tone. He got an early lead. Paw Sox scoring four times in the first, and that was plenty for Tanner Houck. And it's Cespedes, the last chance for Syracuse. Cespedes singled his last time up, but is also grounded into a double play. Falls this back in. The Paw Sox a strike away from a victory. Papio with an 0-2 pitch. Upped up. And it's caught by the second baseman, Hernandez. And the Paw Sox win it. Six to nothing is the final. Tapia closing the door with a 1 2 3 ninth inning. But the story in this one the Paw Sox bats 19 hits. They jumped all over Walker Lockett in the first inning with four runs. And then Tanner Houck did the rest. And the Paw Sox. Mike Antonellis with a pretty convincing victory here tonight. Yeah, I mean, they had a multi-hit game from 8 of 9. They 
scored right away. They got three of those runs, though, in the first with two out. And then Tanner Hawk just dominated, did not allow a hit to the fourth inning. So great win for the Paw Sox. Three hits from Rusne Castillo and from Nick Longy. But I was looking at the same thing, Mike. You take a, a gander at eight of the nine guys end up getting more than one hit. That's incredible. And not much more you can say about Tanner Houck than what we already have. He was spectacular. And Josh Maurer, I will ask you, 19 hits, 13 of those going to the opposite field for Pawtucket. Who gets the credit, the Paw Sox or Tim Kodadama? I think it's TQ. Yeah, the <laughs> Paw Sox player manager today. Doing a good job. They were ready to go. They have been warmed up from their couple of exhibition games, apparently. And Syracuse took it on the chin from the beginning of this game. I can't wait for game two. Yeah, Whatever I was going to say, is. you know, guys, during the quarantine, it's nice that we can do this and, and talk baseball. So I, I've enjoyed hanging out with you guys and having Tim along as well. It's been a lot of fun. Certainly has been a lot of fun. And again, game two is still to be determined. It could be Tuesday. It could be next Thursday. Game two of this three-game E-League series. We do not know, but keep it posted to our social media channels, our Facebook, our Twitter account, and our Instagram for details for game two. Six to nothing again, the final. Paw Sox banging out 19 hits. As they win here on this Thursday night from Highland Park, a good all-around victory for Pawtucket. So that'll do it here for us, for my broadcast partners, Josh Maurer and Mike Antonellis. I am Jim Kane saying so long, and we will talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.